going on everyone welcome rabbit here and today i'm going to be showing you guys how to update and overclock your ks0 fast and easy and only like three or four clicks it's going to be that easy pretty much as easy as just flashing new firmware all right so let's kind of talk about what's been going on here so this hackable oc firmware has been around for around a month or two it's just more people are hearing about it now it was behind a paywall but now there is a free donation version but XYYS, I believe it is, as well as T-Swift, I think that's who's what T-Swift is working with. He is the original founder of unlocking this firmware. And because we're talking about this now is because it's going to lead up to these right here, the KS1 and KS2s. Unlockable firmware is coming for these as well very, very soon. It's in testing phase. It's also going to work on the KS3, which is coming very well soon. So all the Ice River ASICs are going to have firmware updates, but it does sound like the way the KS zeros are done right now, which I'm going to show you the easy version to do, is different than the bigger model. So it's coded different or something. So you're going to have to wait for the T-Swift XYYS version for these when they do release because it sounds like there's some issues from the original ones of these ones going into these. So just a little quick background, but these are coming. KS3 is coming. Everything Ice River is coming very soon. I will show you how to get that done and what to do when it is available, but that's just some quick insider information for you guys for now. But right now we're gonna show you how to do this. Now, before you do this, you're going to wanna update your power supply. So if you look here, this is one of the original ones and I believe this is only like a 90 watt. So if I can just kind of find it right here, you can see 90.1 watts. But I do have a power supply right here that is 120 watts. So if I can get my light on there, you can see in the corner there, 120 watts. So I'm going to do a quick update on this. I would still not recommend 120 watts, even though it's supposed to be using about 110. And based on Silicon Lottery, you might not hit the full 160 giga hash, but it should be around 110 watts. I will have a link down in the description for you guys to order high-end laptops that will work. For these KS zeros based on the barrel plug, I'm not exactly sure the size, but I do know which ones will work from everyone in my Discord. So I will have a link for like a 200 water down in the description there for you guys to order yourself new power supplies because you're gonna start burning down your house if you do not update those. Okay, so here I am at K1 pool and the miner I'm gonna be updating here is the KS02. So this is the one with that updated power supply. Here I am in the interface and here is the GitHub to get it all done. Link down in the description so you can download the file. So originally, as you guys know, you had to set up and install Eclipse and do all these steps and a lot of people might not be comfortable doing all this stuff on your own. Hawk, I'm talking about you. I'm just kidding, love you buddy. But here's a much easier method and the method I have been waiting on so I can show you guys the easiest way to always get stuff done. So all you gotta do here is click on KS0 and now you can see there's a new option here. We have option one, option two. Option two was the other way with the Eclipse IDE. Now all we gotta do is simply download a file and upload it to our miner and we are good to go. So here you can see Grab the updated file, update.bgz. This is the file you're going to want to update. From that point on, you're going to come into your KSO device here, go to firmware upgrade, select your file here. So we're just going to pick it. I'm going to go into downloads. Then I'm going to hit the update button and hit open. And then we're going to simply click update. We're going to wait for it to do its thing for a little while. It should take one to maybe two to five minutes. We're going to have to reboot our miner when we're done. And then we should have this update installed, reset up our pool, everything, and we should be good to go. So we're just going to wait this out and see how long it takes. All right, so it didn't take very long at all, actually. So now we have operation succeeded. I'm going to hit OK. It did say confirm restart the mining machine. I'm going to hit OK. Now, that's something I mentioned in the past video when updating your firmware is if you don't get that prompt there to restart your miner, make sure you do actually restart your miner manually if it doesn't restart. Nothing will take effect until you do get a full reboot of your miner, which leads me to another point. Uh, I should have started with this, but you do have to be on the absolute latest firmware in order to install these updates to take hold. And those can be found on the Ice River website. 
Okay, so it does look like it rebooted. It looks like our pool and everything did maintain all our settings. So I'm going to go into mining settings. I would probably recommend cranking your fan speed right up. So I'm just going to go put this to 100% here. Make sure you do click this little box here or it won't take effect. So I'm going to hit the save here. What do we got here for mode? So just normal and sleep. So I'm going to hit save here on the fan. Operation succeeded. So now we have 100% fans, hopefully. And then we'll get up and running. Yeah, we can see our fans cranked up now. So we're at 100% fans here. Now we just got to wait for some hash rates. I do have three accepted shares. So everything does seem to be working. We just got to wait for everything to detect at the pool at this point. All right, guys, so here we are in the Ice River dashboard. It's been about six minutes, 50 seconds. As we know, these Ice River dashboards are on like a five minute delay. So here we are with the five minute hash rate of 155 giga hash on the current. So we're seeing a boost up pretty close to 160 here. Again, the dedicated hash right here can be all over the place so we do have to wait for that to actually be implemented at the pool which it doesn't look like it happened yet but we're probably going to have to let this sit for a good half hour or so but we can see we're now up to 101 giga hash i'm going to let it sit for you know another 10 minutes or so we'll come back and see if we're gaining hash rate at the pool because that's really where it only matters not the dashboard okay so it's been about a half an hour at the dashboard we can see we're pretty level at at about 155 giga hash here now if we go into the pool i'll do another refresh so it's the absolute latest and we can see the ks02 is upwards of 135 giga hash now so we are gaining ground in hash rate so it definitely looks like this update has worked and we gained some hash rate there all right, so now let's look at our power consumption. I unplugged the dual Epic for now so I can come over to our test bench here and see what's going on. So you can see I kind of have a hodgepodge thing going on here. So what I have here is I've been noticing that the drop meters on 120 volt aren't 100% accurate unless they're on 240 volt. I do find they're a lot more accurate on 240 here. So I actually plug this one in as well to see if we're getting the same readings or not. So here, we can see that we are pulling about 114 watts at the wall with this meter. I tried two of these, they do show the same numbers, but down here we are showing 110 watts. And the higher you go in power, the more the drop meter seems to be off. Remember, that is for 120 volts. So I don't know, I know maybe I have it hooked up wrong. I have no idea here, but on 240 volt, I do find them accurate. And on 120, they're slightly off. But here we can see we're at 114 watts where the drop meter is telling us 110 watts. Now it's on, when it's on lower, when there's just idling, both at like 3.2 watts or 9.2, whatever it was, they were both reading the same number. So like I said, the higher you go in power, the more off it seems the drop meter is when you're on 120 volts. So here we are, we are gonna have to use a number here of 114 watts is what this KS0 is using. Well, there we have it guys. So this KS0 back there is doing about 155 giga hash and it's doing that at about 114 watts. Remember, links in the description to everything you've seen here, update them power supplies, KS1 and KS2 overclocking is coming very, very soon. I'll see you on the next one. Rabbit out.